Hello, welcome back to the Recruiting Assist of the Day. I'm Justin Brantley, founder of the Brantley Method Sports Entertainment and the Away Team Sports. Excited to bring episode eight to you here. Um, it's been a great journey so far. Uh, I've thoroughly enjoyed you know, the topics that we've discussed. I've enjoyed the feedback and talking to people and hearing from people just you know, what they see, what they hear, what they're thinking. Um, and, and really just want to make sure that I'm providing a resource, uh, providing help to student athletes as we're doing these. Uh, the Brantley Method was founded on three principles. Uh, number one, education. Number two, inspiration. And number three, motivation. So everything we do, I want to make sure that it in some way educates, um, in some way inspires, and in some way motivates somebody out there to make a change or to continue with what you're doing, right? Um, you know, sometimes it's not necessarily about starting over and, and changing course, but sometimes it's just that, that reassurance that what you're doing is the right thing and it's going to work out um, and it's going to, you know, you're going to be successful as long as you remain positive, keep working hard, um, stay committed and consistent. So today I want to talk about something that I've noticed. Um, as some of you know, or if you've watched some of the other videos that I've posted, um, you know, I am the watcher. You know, I go out and I watch basketball all around the country. Um, all different levels from middle school all the way up through professional. Uh, so one of the things that I've observed quite a bit during my time, um, and it just kind of you know, smacked me in my face a little bit here this week, is the body language and demeanor of, of student athletes. But because I want to go threefold in this, uh, we're going to touch on not just the body language and demeanor of student athletes, but the body language and demeanor of coaches, uh, the body language and demeanor of parents. So threefold. This video is not just for student athletes, it's for student athletes, parents, coaches as well. All right. So first and foremost, student athletes, your body language can either help or hurt your recruiting process. College coaches are not recruiting a kid that has bad body language, bad posture, uh, you know, is coming across as a bad teammate. You know, it's the little things. You know, you're watching a game and a kid misses a shot and his teammate, you know, gets frustrated, you know, is, is upset with him, is, is, is tearing him down. Uh, that's not what we're looking for as coaches. You know, we're looking for guys that you know, are going to elevate their team in, in all things. We're looking for guys that, you know, when adversity hits them, because trust and believe it will hit you. Um, and just because it's not hitting you at the high school level because you're better than everybody else on the court or your team's better than all the teams you, you face, at the college level, adversity hits and it hits sometimes on a weekly basis. You know, and as a college coach or as a scout, as a recruiter, a talent evaluator, we need to know how you're going to you know, face that adversity, how you're going to respond and react. Are you going to shut down? Um, are you going to get frustrated and do something that can hurt the team and hinder the team? Uh, what's it going to be like when adversity comes your, your way in your personal life or adversity comes your way you know, on the education side of things and you're struggling in the classroom? We need to know how you're going to react and respond to that. And your body language on the court gives us a sure telltale sign of a little bit more than just what your talent level is and more so what your character is and how you handle and address and deal with adversity. So it's vitally important for you guys, you know, as you're playing that game and as you're just walking in the gym and walking out of the gym and dealing with wins and dealing with losses, that you're doing it in stride, you're doing it as a you know, professional, um, you're doing it as you know, somebody of high character and high, high moral fiber even when you don't think anybody's watching, right? Um, you always have a positive attitude, a positive mindset. You hold your head high. Uh, you don't tear your teammates down. Um, your, your body language just shows that of a winner, shows that of a leader, shows that of somebody that we want on our team. Now, for coaches, same thing, right? It's important that you know, you're showing yourself as a professional all the times and you're having positive body language for multiple reasons. Most importantly, because your kids are going to feed off of you. You can't discipline your kid on your team for having bad body language if you yourself are having bad body language. You can't criticize or, or discipline your kid on your team for talking trash to the, to the other team or talking back to the ref or you know, whatever the case may be if you're doing that, right? Like that just sets that standard of this is what not only is acceptable, but this is what I'm gonna do. So kids in most, in most instances, they're gonna follow what their leader's doing. And if their coach, is showing up to the game late, if their coach you know, has, has bad disposition, uh, has a negative attitude, has bad body language, more often than not, you know, that's going to be adapted or that's going to be absorbed by those players and it's going to be you know, shown in their behavior. So it's important for you as a coach to be on top of that. Um, and also, you know, as college coaches are looking and evaluating your players, they're also evaluating you. 
they're questioning, okay, what am I going to have to deal with if I take this kid? If this is what's been accepted or this is what's been you know, allowed within the organization he's been in for the last four years, why should anything change just because I, my standards are different than that for him to come to our institution or her to come to our institution? So it's vitally important, coaches. Um, you're professional, right? Um, you're showing up to games on time. Um, if I see one more pair of AirPods, in a coach's ear while he's coaching, I, I promise you, I might walk across the court and take him. Just saying, be mad if you want. It is what it is. Um, one more coach coaching in flip flops or, or, or Nike slides. I love Nike more than anybody else. But if I see one more pair of Nike slides as I'm watching a, a middle school or high school basketball game, I'm going to lose it. And I'm going to, and, and it's not going to be pretty. I'm going to come and talk to you because what you're showing your kids is that they don't have to be professional. If their leader's not being professional, if he's not showing up and, and on task and on top of you know, the minor details, how can you expect your, your student athletes to be on top of the details? Uh, and coaches, uh, I'm sorry, parents. Parents, same thing goes for you. College coaches are evaluating you in the stands whether you know it or not. As soon as I walk in the gym, when I'm looking at a player, I'm trying to identify who his parents are for multiple reasons. Number one, um, if I want to make contact, if I want to have a conversation, um, if that's a player that I want to get to know more about or I want to recruit, I'm recruiting the family. I'm not just recruiting that player. Um, also, you know, I want to see what kind of structure that, that student athlete comes from. You know, what kind of environment um, that student athlete was, was brought up in because it's going to determine whether or not that student athlete's a good fit for our program or for whatever program I'm looking at that student athlete for. Um, so once again, I mean, there, there's little pet peeves that stand out to me when I go to these games. I'm tired of walking to middle school and high school gyms and smelling weed um, you know, on, on the parents um, and on people in the stands. You know, we're, we're going to a middle school game or we're going to a high school game. We've got to hold the standard higher. Uh, we've got to set the tone uh, of our behavior and showing our young student athletes what's acceptable and what's not acceptable. I'm not here to judge you. Do what you want to do within your own home. Do what you want to do on your own time. But walking into a gym representing not only your child, but representing the school that your child goes to, um, and, you, and you smell like like weed. I mean, that's just not a um, it's just not a good look. It's not a good look for your your child. It's not a good look for the recruitment process. It's not a good look for yourself. Uh, so you know some of the little things to, to take care of. Uh, you know, I've always called myself a director of the details, and I think that it's vitally important as you navigate this recruiting process, or your player navigates this recruiting process or your child navigates this recruiting process, that the details be held just as importantly as what's happening on the court. The off the court, you know, minor things, the, the body language, the demeanor, the academics, the behavior, all of that has to be at an A1 level in order for your child to make it to, to the level that they're dreaming and working and training to and aspiring to be at. Uh, you've heard it from me. Maybe you, maybe you believe it. Maybe you're, you're, you're taking everything I'm saying and you're saying, okay, yeah, that's great. Or maybe you're looking at it and saying he has no clue what he's talking about. So over the summer, I did an interview. Um, great friend, uh, Coach Yorick uh, at, at Texas Tech, him and I sat down and we talked about these things. We talked about what it is that he looks for when he's recruiting a player. I'm going to include uh, a link to that video at the end of this video. So you'll see it pop up. Um, click on it. It'll talk about kind of how he evaluates parents in the stands, how he evaluates you know, who it is in that student athlete's life, his, his people, so to speak, um, to give him a better understanding of if that's his type of player or not. So I hope that this brought you some clarity. Um, I hope that it educated, inspired, and motivated you in some way, shape, form, or fashion. Uh, leave a comment below if you have any questions, comments, feedback, anything you'd like me to talk about. Um, episode nine coming to you tomorrow. Uh, I'm open for suggestions. I got a couple things on my mind that I'd like to talk about, but I'm willing to change course if there's a good topic that comes to me via email, uh, DM, or, or comment. So thanks, guys. Thanks for tuning in again. Uh, look forward to continue this journey with you. Have a great day.